now streaming on Netflix and mixing two fantastical ideas with the world of Sherlock Holmes plus the element of the supernatural, this is my review of the first season of The Irregulars. <laughs> Set in Victorian London, the series follows a gang of troubled street teens who are manipulated into solving crimes for the sinister Dr. Watson and his business partner, the elusive Sherlock Holmes. But before I kick off with my thoughts and review, I want to know what you think. Whether you're seeing this before watching the show, are you excited to see Sherlock Holmes and the Supernatural mixed together, or if you've just binged it all and are here right now, let me know your thoughts on the show, on the first season, in the comments below. And if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Why don't you click the subscribe button it helps me it helps the channel and you'll always be aware of whenever i upload a review a trailer reaction a live discussion a podcast and you'll always be aware of that by clicking that subscribe button and maybe if you want the bell now this is a show i was extremely excited about just from the premise alone the world of sherlock holmes meeting elements of the supernatural is just a marriage i never knew I wanted. And in that regard, the show does really well in building elements of the supernatural and lore and inserting them very naturally into the show. And so in that regard, the show was a breath of fresh air. It was a fresh look into this world. I'm also a sucker for Victorian era England. And so that just was right up my alley. And something that I'm sure will be many people's main complaint, I love Monster of the Week shows. This show certainly has a progressive story. It has something that begins at the very first episode and is completed by the last one, but the enemies in every episode is basically a monster of the week. Which, granted, it is weird for a Netflix show to have that element because you got to assume most people interested in this show will just binge it. But I still like that element. I still like that feel. There's a Stephen Kingness to all these mysteries and all these monsters and these people who have these powers and I really like how this show approaches that. And I really like our characters as well. There are people who fight every day to survive and once this opportunity comes into their lives they have to take it because there's just a lot to be gained. There's B, Billy, Spike and Jesse and all of them have their qualities and their flaws and by the end of the show I found myself very much rooting for them. I thought they had enough of compelling arcs for me to feel like they progressed enough to not end up in the same place that they started. Apart from Spike, I feel Spike has his moments and I really like the actor and you do get to understand all of the characters very very well. You get to understand their dynamics, what makes them tick, you get to understand their strengths and their weaknesses and how each of them individually is troubled by their past because each of them has a compelling and interesting backstory. Spike however is the one I feel was most lacking. He is the one that has great moments. He is probably the most charismatic kid out of the group, but he doesn't really have a spot in here in the sense that you can't really tell what his arc was in this, so it just feels like he's lacking one. The biggest surprise, however, in this show was Leopold for me. He is someone from the monarchy, of course, but he wants to be normal. He wants to be accepted by the common folk, and so he infiltrates this group without telling them that, and how his journey unfolds legit made him kind of the best developed character. He legit started up as my least favorite or interesting character of the group, but ended up probably as the show stealer, as he motivates everyone around him, and as the most compelling arc, because he ends up in such a different place than where he started and you clearly know his priorities, you clearly know what he wants, what he needs and so I think the show did a really good job with Leopold. Unfortunately this show was not as good as it could have been, as it should have been or as I wanted it to be. This show, without any spoilers, runs into this awful trap of relying too much on its most famous character and that is Sherlock Holmes. Not at any point in this show, and I do really like our characters, I do really like these kids, and I think the acting on their part is really great, but you just want to see Sherlock Holmes, man. Who they have playing Sherlock Holmes in here is an actor I'm not familiar with, 
but oh my god, he's already one of my favorite interpretations of the character. Because we see the character at his lowest, and he's immediately interesting because of that. And so, I think one of the dangers and one of the faults of this show is presenting as Sherlock Holmes, so immediately I became much more interested in whatever Sherlock Holmes was doing and whatever his journey was, rather than the kids themselves. The show also lacked a compelling villain for me. There's conceptually something very interesting about its villain, but the show just drops it because it has to prioritize other things that I cannot get into because spoilers. But the show's structure is also very odd because this is a mystery show, because there are these elements of Stephen King and of horror that is familiar and friendly enough to younger viewers, I think the show lacks in catching the audience's attention early on. Because from the get-go you have to invest so much just because there's a mystery to these characters, to their world, to the lore, and everything around them, and everything that moves them through the story. This is a show that I don't think can hook a lot of people from the beginning. The show starts off prioritizing the mystery of this world and of these villains of the week and of what is really going on because of someone's superpowers. And it doesn't really bother with showing us and telling us who these characters are until after that and mixing it together and unveiling these things at the same time, at the same pace, at the same points in the story. So the beats throughout the show get muddled and very, very hard to decipher because you don't really care for these characters while you already care about the mystery, just because you're genuinely curious about it. Also, by the end, I still feel the show is struggling to find its identity. That premise is sensational. Victorian England, the world of Sherlock Holmes, supernatural, all mixed together. And by the end of the show, I feel like I'm watching a show about that, but I still don't know what its true identity is. With this premise, I could describe a million shows and I could execute a million different shows, and I still feel that by the end of the season. I like these characters, I love this concept, and I like this journey that these characters had. And I hope to keep seeing them because I like where they end up, and I think this show has incredible potential. I think this could be very fun, whether if you're going in as a new viewer to everything about Sherlock Holmes, whether you're going in because you like your horror stuff, you like your supernatural, or if you're an old fan like me who just enjoys seeing all these things mixed together. The Irregulars has a few identity issues. It doesn't really know what it's going to be yet. But as far as its concept and premise are concerned, it executes them in a very fun and really engaging way. I hope we keep seeing these characters, I hope we keep seeing this world, because I did enjoy my time with them. I just hope that the show really can stick the landing if it gets a season 2. I'm giving the Irregulars a B-. Now, tossing it over to you, what did you think about the Irregulars, my beautiful geekies? Let me know in the comments below what is your favorite version of Sherlock Holmes and what are some ideas you would have for the show if they get a season two. Let me know all of that down there. And if you've watched this far, don't forget, if you haven't done so yet, to click the subscribe button because it really helps me. It helps the channel. I also will have a review for the latest episode of Falcon and the Winter Soldier later today, so stay tuned for that, as well as the live discussion. So I hope to see you in those. And so until then, love each other. I love the movies.